introduction. And it's a pleasure to be with everyone tonight. Uh, came up with a little uh, presentation on nutrition and sleep for the community health talk for today. And without further ado, we'll, we'll jump right in. Um, so I always like to start off first with what is a registered dietitian? Um, we're essentially experts in human nutrition and the regulation of diet. And we can alter an individual's nutrition uh, based on their medical conditions. So things like diabetes, kidney disease, um, things like weight management, uh, the pre and post surgery, um, just kind of a whole gambit of a, a lot of different conditions. Um, and we're also regulated healthcare professionals. So that differentiates us, differentiates us between um, like health coaches and nutritionists, um, but we're licensed to assess, prevent, uh, diagnose, and treat nutrition problems. So some of the objectives I wanna cover for the, this presentation today is to discuss how food can affect our, our sleep quality, um, provide a brief overview of digestion. Okay. Um, as far as the objectives, we'll, like I said, discuss how food can affect our sleep quality, uh, provide a brief overview of digestion, uh, discuss types of foods that can affect our sleep, uh, discuss how we can improve our sleep through food, uh, and discuss a little bit about herbal supplements and food compounds uh, that are naturally occurring that can help us fall asleep. At. And then at the end, we'll have uh, a section for questions. So overall, a lot of the research on diet quality and sleep um, as a whole is uh, somewhat mixed. However, there is some evidence uh, that can be used as a guide to improving sleep through food. And a lot of these um, uh, studies are looking at meal components as a whole and not so much study um, single uh, food components. So overall, the research supports that meals that are high in fat and sugar make it more difficult to get a restful night's sleep, while a well-balanced meal pattern can improve sleep quality. And I have the two pictures on the bottom there. Uh, on the left-hand side is um, kind of your, you know, typical fast food, burger and french fries. Um, it's typically pretty high in fat. Uh, a lot of people would get a soda with that, which is high in sugar. And then on the right-hand side, um, I have uh, more of an example of something that's balanced. So this is more of like a deconstructed hamburger. So there's no cheese, uh, but we still have the burger meat. And instead of the French fries, we have a sweet potato. And this is just, I just want to touch on the digestive system just a little bit. So uh, more of the, the visual learners can kind of think about um, what's occurring when we do eat. So starting at the top with the mouth, you know, we chew our food. Um, we swallow it, it goes down that long tube in the esophagus, and then it kind of sits in our stomach. And the really important thing here is that digestion is an active process. Um, and we will see in the next slide. So your stomach has this grinding action where it um, helps to break apart food and create more surface area so you can, all the enzymes can come in and really break things down and uh, so you can digest it in your small intestine. And this um, action that your stomach does is called peristalsis. So there's, uh, your stomach is essentially a muscle and it's just really kind of just grinding and, and churning up the, the food in your stomach. So after you eat a meal, this is occurring. And depending on um, how much food you ate for that particular meal depends on how full the stomach is. Uh, and your stomach is still gonna be contracting and churning around. And typically it's gonna take about four to six hours uh, before your stomach will completely empty. So that's gonna be important a little later uh, when we're um, talking about how soon we eat before we go to bed. And we have some types of foods that can affect our sleep. Um, typically your higher fat foods, they're slower to digest and they stay in the stomach much longer. Um, and just to give you some examples of the high fat foods, things like fried foods, sour cream, uh, Alfredo sauces, um, salad dressings, especially if you didn't make them at home, if it's kind of like the store-bought ranch, um, usually high in fat, um, whole eggs, nut butter, cookies, cakes, ice cream, um, fatty meats. So this would be like your 80% um, 
uh, lean ground beef or maybe like a ribeye steak, um, chicken with the skin on it, uh, and then cheese and whole milk. And then on the other end of the spectrum, um, high sugar foods um, typically digest very quickly and um, sugar contains, you know, carbohydrates and uh, our brain is, that's the preferred fuel source for our brains. There's actually a Columbia University trial that found that um, high sugar intake negatively impacted sleep quality uh, and that it was associated with more sleep arousals during the night. So if I have something really high in sugar before I go to bed, uh, it's very possible uh, that we may not get a restful night's sleep. And another thing that could affect people is a condition called GERD or acid reflux. Um, not everyone has this, but it can be developed. But this is a condition where your stomach acid moves up that tube in your esophagus, creates like a burning sensation, and it's really uncomfortable. About 18 to 27% of people in the United States uh, are affected by GERD. And uh, some people may even experience kind of that, the temporary acid reflux. It's not chronic or occurring all the time. Um, if, if we eat a really large meal with some of these foods that can um, irritate us. And some of those foods include things like alcohol, garlic, uh, raw onions, spicy foods, lemons, oranges, uh, orange juice because of the uh, acidity, uh, things like caffeine, uh, coffee, tea, and soda, uh, and also things like peppermint and tomatoes and chocolate. So I kind of gave you, you know, all the things that, that could disturb our uh, sleep at night, but what can we do about it? So how can we improve our sleep through food? Um, overall, it's the time that we're eating. So we'll look in more into that. Uh, the speed at which we eat. Chewing our food, how, how much we're able to chew our food up. The portion sizes we're having, and that's definitely a big one. The contents of our meal, again, the high fat, high sugar, um, is, could lead to more uh, sleep disturbances at night. And then what kinds of things we can substitute. So we'll go over that as well. So in terms of time we're eating, um, ideally we wanna eat about four hours before we're gonna lay down for the night. Um, I know a lot of people, they're working late hours and you know that's kind of a hard thing to do. Um, but that's just the, the ideal recommendation. But there's other things that we can do as well if that can't be avoided. Um, the speed we're eating. So we want to not rush and, you know, kind of be in a relaxed state for the day. Um, and then chewing, making sure we're chewing our food adequately. So if I'm having something like a, a nice steak, I definitely want to make sure to, to chew that up really well because that's just going to help with that digestion overall. The next part is the uh, portion size. Uh, and I have an example on here. It's a nine inch plate versus a 12 inch plate. If you were to go into your kitchen cabinet right now, chances are most people have 12 inch plates. Um, and when you buy those, those nice ceramic plate sets, they usually come with that 12 inch plate, the larger one, and then the smaller one is the nine inch plate. Um, and down at the bottom here, the uh, plate that you see with the blue around it, that's going to be the, the nine inch. Um, and then the, the white kind of ring border around that, that's going to be your 12 inch plate. So really we want to recommend um, having that, the, the nine inch plate so we're not getting too large of a portion. Because again, we don't want to fill our stomach up so much that um, it's going to make that, that grinding, uh, that peristalsis, um, have some of that stomach acid come back up. In terms of meal contents, how we can adjust some things, uh, if we're looking to get a better night's sleep, I would definitely recommend incorporating more lean proteins. So these are things like your skinless um, chicken, and it can either be baked or grilled, um, and then your lean ground meat. So instead of choosing that 80-20 ground beef, um, try going for the 90-10, the um, 
or even the uh, 937. And then other things like salmon, cod, and tuna are also going to be really good sources of uh, lean protein. Complex carbohydrates. So the difference between the high sugar foods and the complex carbohydrate foods is that they contain fiber. And the function of fiber um, is that in terms of um, releasing blood sugar into our body, the fiber is going to slow down the release of blood sugar. So we're not getting a, a really high spike. So instead of like a mountain peak going up and then down and up and down, it's more of like a steady wave. So some of the great sources of complex carbohydrates are uh, oatmeal, whole grain breads uh, or bagels, uh, brown rice, quinoa, and uh, farro, along with the whole grain pastas. And then in terms of fruits and vegetables, they also provide us with a, a good amount of fiber um, and a very, very minimal um, carbohydrates and sugar content. As long as we're selecting fresh uh, or frozen fruits and vegetables, um, we're gonna be in good shape. And if you're really not sure how much sugar something has in it, always check that nutrition label on the back. Um, a lot of the labels now, they, they will say, you know, uh, how much added sugar is included, and that's that's where we want to limit things. And again, limiting added sugars and fats, um, trying to have smaller dessert portions. Um, I definitely don't want to tell people, you know, don't have dessert anymore. Um, we definitely want to incorporate those in there. If, if it's a time to have a dessert, I would just recommend smaller portions. Um, choosing sugar-free drinks over regular soda or juice, uh, having reduced fat dressings. Maybe you can make a, a dressing at home. That's always the best choice. Um, reduced fat cheeses, uh, along with the pasta sauces, depending on the sauce, like an Alfredo sauce, they're typically high in fat, and they do make um, reduced fat versions at the store. Uh, and again, making burgers at home with the really lean ground beef, adding your own ingredients, and really giving it some, some good flavor. In terms of the substitutions, um, so a big one that a lot of people don't know about, uh, if we're used to putting sour cream on a baked potato or sour cream on enchiladas or tacos, um, I would challenge you to try non-fat Greek yogurt. It kind of sounds weird, but it's, you really can't taste the difference. Um, and it has still has that good creamy texture to it as well. So that's a really good way to cut out the fat of the sour cream, but still get the protein from the dairy and the calcium. Another one for um, barbecue sauces. Um, so they tend to be a little more on the sugary side when we go and buy them from the grocery store. Uh, but I would encourage you all to try the, the dry rubs and spices if you're looking to cut back on your overall sugar intake. That other big one that's high in fat is salad dressings. Um, I would just recommend making those from home uh, with reduced fat ingredients or use something like a olive oil and um, a vinegar uh, kind of concoction that you make at home. And that way you can actually control how much fat goes into the recipe. And then the, the last one, I know French fries are really popular and they taste really good. Uh, but have you ever tried parsnip fries? Um, it's definitely a, a different take on the French fry and it has a really unique flavor. And those can be baked in the oven and they're pretty easy to prepare as well. And you can also try the, like a baked sweet potato as well. Um, those are pretty good too. Okay, so in, in terms of food compounds and supplements that we can have, uh, in terms of helping our sleep at night, there is some research to support some of these here. And the first thing is cherries. Um, cherries are one of the few uh, foods that actually contain melatonin. And uh, melatonin actually helps you to regulate the sleep and wake cycle. Now, a lot, some of you may have heard about drinking like cherry juice or tart cherry juice. Uh, and I just want to, that's, it's still going to contain the melatonin, 
um, but it's also going to have about 28 grams of sugar in it per eight ounce cup. So if you, you were going to go that route of having, if you prefer having the juice, um, I would just want to encourage you to have uh, a balanced meal with that. Um, so we don't get that really high spike in the, the blood sugar. Uh, another food compound is the mineral magnesium. And magnesium per promotes production of GABA, which is a uh, neurotransmitter uh, that encourages relaxation and sleep. And a lot of people tend to be um, deficient in magnesium in the United States. So uh, definitely your higher magnesium foods are great things to have uh, at nighttime. So some of the food sources for magnesium include spinach, uh, pumpkin seeds, lima beans, tuna, and brown rice. And then the last one I wanted to, to mention is uh, chamomile tea. So this would be more in the supplement category, uh, but chamomile itself contains a compound called apigenin, um, and is thought to reduce anxiety and initiate sleep. And I have some of my citations there in case anyone wants to look further more into um, any of the research. Great stuff. Okay. Some question time for you. All right. Um, so I love that you talked about sugar and how we really need to be careful about sugar. And uh, I think when Rachel uh, spoke about her uh, carbs, uh, the, the fat truth um, talk. She taught us that, you know, to really read labels and watch for sugars and they usually end with the uh, letters O-L. Is that Rachel that taught me that? Maybe it's, maybe it's by Frank Kristen. Anyway, um, is that, what, what is your take on that? Is that correct? Like watch for things on the label that end in O-L, it's usually sugar? Um, OL, like uh, mannitol and sorbitol? Yeah, yeah. If it ends in OL, it's probably a sugar. Like, I remember learning brown rice something was, like, sugar. And I was thinking, oh, brown rice is good for you. But the yeah. they use brown rice to create sugar. Yeah, so the... Sorry, can you hear me? Right, so all, um, all carbohydrates in the body will turn uh, eventually into sugar. And... Um, the, the important thing is that we control the release of sugar in our blood. So if I were to have, say, just a glass of orange juice without any pulp in it, um, that's going to digest a lot faster and raise my blood sugar higher in a shorter amount of time than if I were to just eat um, a couple of oranges. Uh, and that being because there's uh, the fiber in the, the whole orange compared to the juice. What about stevia? Does stevia spike your insulin? Um, I would say not to a significant amount. And we actually recommend stevia over um, the other artificial sweeteners out there just because it is plant-based. And it's more of a natural um, derivative where the other ones are a lot more artificial. Right. Uh, OK, so um, we have a couple of questions. What about tryptophan foods? Or sleep? What do you know about that? Um, so I, th I think usually that stems from the Thanksgiving meal because turkey is really high in tryptophan. Yeah. Um, so typically, I actually had that as a beginning example for the be at the beginning of the presentation and I, I cut it out. But usually we get tired after that Thanksgiving meal uh, because a lot of people tend to have a, a, a big meal, you know, we're celebrating, we're having a good time. Um, and it's more so that the, the blood flow um, kind of redirects to our digestive system. It's called mesenteric demand. So we have an increased blood amount going to our stomach and a little less blood going to our brain. So we kind of get a little, uh, a little tired in terms of that. Yeah, that's, that was, I just thought that would be interesting to bring it up because people, that is kind of a myth about the tryptophan. It's usually all the fatty foods that we eat. We eat too much. Um, so you talked about those yeah. parsnip fries. I'm really going to try that. What is, what about air frying? Like, do you, you, are you a fan of air frying things? Yeah, air frying can be a great alternative. Um, you're really cutting out the, the extra oil that you would use from regular frying. 
uh, and you still get that nice crisp consistency. So it's a really good substitution. So we've got some questions about bedtime snacks. Um, would you say is better to like try to avoid bedtime snacks or would you encourage a bedtime snack? And then is, if, if so, is non-fat Greek yogurt a good bedtime snack? Okay. Um, so it, it, it always depends on nutrition. So I would say if someone is ha having um, a lot of issues falling asleep and they're eating a bedtime snack, um, I would say try and cut back on that and see if that makes a difference. And if it doesn't, um, then there, there could be another cause. So something like the non-fat Greek yogurt um, would, would be pretty good uh, depending on if it has something else in it. But if we're just talking about like plain non-fat Greek yogurt, um, then yeah, that would be great. It's low in obviously fat and then low in sugar as well. Right, and someone said that they were recommended to take tart cherry juice. Um, what can they eat with it to offset that sugar spike? Okay, um, it could be a combination of things. So we could have something like a little bit of almonds with that. That's gonna provide us with a little bit of fat. So as long as we're not having too many, um, that'd be beneficial. Almonds also have fiber in them. And then uh, really any kind of vegetable. Uh, again, those are really low in the carbohydrates and they're, they're higher in fiber. So that's, that's the thing that's really going to help control that release of blood sugar. And do frozen cherries do the same job as the fresh? Uh, yes. Okay. Would you suggest intermittent fasting for better sleep, 2 p.m. to 6 a.m.? Uh, generally, we, we recommend staying away from the intermittent fasting just because it makes it really difficult for us to get all of the, the nutrients that we need in a day in that really short window. Uh, and again, the, a lot of people in the U.S. are deficient in uh, magnesium. So you would really, really have to be careful and plan everything out in order to get all the nutrients that you need in a day. Okay. So Rachel's on and she just um, told me that the O-L at the end is for sugar alcohols. So those yes. are like alcohols converted to sugar. Thank you, Rachel. Mm -hmm. um, and then here's one that I think I can answer and then you can back me up, Austin. Is there a natural supplement that can be taken to help with sleep? And so we kind of went over magnesium. Obviously, you want to you try to get your supplements from, from foods that you eat all day. Um, but he said Americans are magnesium deficient and magnesium will help you fall asleep. Uh, melatonin, he mentioned melatonin and the, and the foods that have that. Uh, melatonin, if taking, you know, kind of early enough will also help you initiate sleep. Uh, but again, we, I know Austin would say the same, try to get what you can from your foods so that you don't have to take so much supplements. You want to say comment on that Austin yeah absolutely the, the body has certain requirements for all these all of our vitamins and minerals for the day um, and with our you know busy work schedules and a lot of people have you know hectic lives especially right now with everything going on um, I would really just encourage people to to look at what they're what they're eating and see what kind of adjustments that they can make because maybe they're not getting enough magnesium from their food or uh, maybe they really like cherries and they never eat them. Uh, you know, those are things that we can add in instead of um, adding, adding supplements, which are going to add another cost to our grocery bill. Um, we might be able to just modify some of the stuff that we're eating to get a benefit without having to spend extra money. And the other thing with supplements is that that entire industry is not regulated. So certain supplements are tested uh, and they have a, a seal on them. Uh, and if you shop at Costco, you might see a, a little, uh, it's like a green and gold seal on the front of the label that says USP on it. So those are the supplements that are really um, uh, tested to make sure that what the company is saying is in their product is actually in there. So without that seal, you may not know what you're getting. So you could be buying a magnesium supplement and it could just have um, flour in it or 
something completely different. What about turmeric? Mm -hmm. Turmeric play a role in sleep at all or health? Someone's asking that. It's a great question. Uh, that is a great question. Um, in terms of Trying to think. In terms of stress, I know turmeric's uh, very anti-inflammatory. It has a lot of those properties to it, um, so that could help alleviate some of the stress in the in the body overall if it's taken consistently uh, over a period of time. Uh, but as far as um, supplementing that with uh, right before you go to bed, um, I would have to look into that one more. Yeah, I think anytime you can have less stress in your life, you're going to sleep better for sure. So turmeric's anti-stress, mm -hmm. that's a great. Absolutely. Wow, great information. I really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Does anybody else have any other questions while we're waiting for the final questions? Um, tell us, Austin, about what you do at Tailored Bites and how you can help somebody that's struggling. So, uh, you know, I, I mentioned I have a chronic illness. I have rheumatoid arthritis and I don't cook, they, they, I, it's a joke that I'm domestically challenged. Um, fortunately, I have an amazing husband that does all my cooking, but how would you help someone like me um, and how do I get a hold of you? Okay, um, so in terms of what I do at Taylor Bites, uh, I'm one of the dietitians there. Rachel's the, uh, the main dietitian and CEO of the company um, and she is providing uh, a nutrition concierge service. So, um, in terms of a business, there's no other business out there that we know of right now, and especially in Arizona, um, that's providing comprehensive nutrition plans for people with meals included. Um, so it can be something as simple as maybe uh, you want to have better options for your lunch, uh, but you're having trouble at work finding those options. Rachel prepares, um, you know, meals that are very uh, balanced and nutrient dense. So you're getting a lot of those vitamins and minerals in, um, or you could do uh, what we call a tailored meal plan um, where we typically want to do a, an introductory consult with you, um, really figure out uh, what kind of nutrition problems that you're having and how we can address them and sit down and come up with a plan for you uh, and then plan your meals out and do an entire tailored meal plan. Wow. And you guys have a special going on right now, right? Is it for, for um, like, maybe Rachel will type it in the chat. Um, so how do we get a hold of Tailored Bites if we, how great, like, so I can come see you, you guys can look at my blood work, figure out what would work best for my body type and my blood situation and what I have going on, and then you can customize all my meals and cook them all for me and deliver them to my house or I can pick them up. That's wow. correct. Yep. That's Absolutely. That's so and it's especially helpful for people with um, like type two diabetes, for example, um, that are having problems controlling their blood sugar um, or maybe uh, someone who's recently, you know, has diagno a diagnosis of heart disease and they're looking for more heart healthy options and they just don't know where to start. Um, we can be an excellent resource for that. And I mean, it can even go up to someone who is, you know, really good at um, cooking in the kitchen uh, and just wants like a, a, a balanced meal plan. We can accommodate that as well. That's awesome. Uh, so Rachel is saying that we can give away a raffle. So if you're on here and you attended tonight, um, when we're all done, I'll draw a name and I'll email you. And you are going to get two meals and two baked goods from Taylor Bites. That's pretty cool. Wow, thanks. So um, if I come to you and I, can I use like my HSA to pay? You mentioned you're a healthcare uh, practitioner. Like, could I use my HSA card to pay for my one-on-one -on -one consultation with you, Austin? Um, that one would have to be a question for Rachel. Okay. But in the, in the meantime, while she's addressing that, you, you mentioned the sugar before in the OL. Mm -hmm. So the, the, like Rachel mentioned, the OL is for the sugar alcohol. And then, um, if you're looking at a nutrition label, the OSE, um, like sucralose, that's going to be a regular type of sugar. Okay. So we have to be careful of all those, right? Yes. The, but the stevia, OSE. But stevia is good. Like, well, it's not good, but it's, it's acceptable because it's plant-based. That's, I kind of Correct. 
when I learned that, I took all of that stuff out of my kitchen and I threw it away. And now I don't buy anything with any of it in it. And oh my goodness, it made such a difference in how I feel. And I, I will use stevia like a tiny bit. And like, I'll buy the vitamin mm -hmm. water zeros. We mentioned water and like how important that is and like how you shouldn't drink sugary beverages. And I was a big Dr. Pepper girl. Oh, but like people with inflammatory processes going on in their body should not drink Dr. Pepper. So I got like the vitamin water zero and I would dump it. This is my water. I drink this whole thing every day. And I dump my whole vitamin water in here and I water it down because it's too sweet. And then it gives my water like a flavor and it really helps, helps me. So, well, great. Well, I would just really encourage everybody out there. If you have any questions, you're going to get an email from me tomorrow following up. Please reach out. I will make sure the winner um, knows how to get in touch with Taylor Bites. Austin and Rachel, thank you. Oh, here's more questions. Let's see, I think I got them all. Um, should PM aspirin be avoided? I think that's a provider, medical provider question. How many cherries right before bed? Do you know how many cherries? So the, the, the studies that they conducted were anywhere from 48 to 72 cherries. So that's quite a bit. Awesome. All right. Wow. I don't think I could eat that many cherries before. I yeah. Went to but I mean, if someone's hurt. interested, if someone's interested in trying it, um, you can start with a handful, see if that has an effect and then just kind of go up from there. Oh, great. Well, again, thank you guys so much. I'm really looking forward to using your services myself when I get back to Arizona. I'm hiding out over here in California until the coronavirus kind of dies down over there. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully soon. Yeah, it's really nice to meet you. Thank you, everyone, for You're being well. here. And I'll get to your Facebook questions if you guys had any, because Glenn's on my phone watching. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Bye, Austin. Thanks, everyone.